Please welcome back Dr. Robert Ryan from Virginia Mason and Dr. Nicholas Jansen from Highline Medical Center Foundation plus psychotherapist Caleb Dodson. Thank you all for sticking around for our panel. Um, Dr. Ryan, let's start with stroke again. Uh, headaches, you mentioned as a, a potential precursor. What other symptoms? So certainly headaches we worry about with bleeding strokes, but as I said, 80% of strokes actually come from a blocked artery in the brain. Okay. And so that's where we're looking for our, uh, the acronym we call FAST. Mm -hmm. So facial drooping, uh, arm weakness. If you lift up both arms, one of them drifts down right. and then trouble with speech. And then that means it's time to call. Uh, so any sudden onset of a new neurologic change like that, it's very important that you call 911 and get to the hospital because one of the big things with stroke care is time is uh, still really of yeah. the essence. And, so don't and have somebody drive, you have the ambulance come. You've got a gizmo that's right. here that's part of the, the new treatment. Show us yeah. how that works. So absolutely. So this is a, w one of our new stent retriever devices and it's a, a, a little device that you can see it comes out of this, this small catheter we can advance into the arteries in the brain mm -hmm. and the stent comes out and actually grabs a large clot and then we can pull that back into our catheter. And it's just really revolutionized the way we treat wow. these biggest uh, uh, blockages in the brain uh, because we can pull out these large clots. And uh, much like we were saying that time is of the essence, uh, to get the intravenous clot buster, you have to be at the hospital within four and a half hours of stroke onset. But this? Thanks to some new data that came out this year, we can do treatments in some cases up to 24 hours with this type of a, wow. of a device. But there's no doubt that your outcomes are always better the sooner we can get the arteries open in the brain if it, the stroke is being caused by a blocked artery. Good to know, and that's a breakthrough. Um, Dr. Jansen, let's talk about the populations who are served by Health Connection so that we can all kind of imagine what it is that, that we're trying to do here. Yeah, so we talked about uh, patient populations that are vulnerable. We think about a lot and see a lot folks who are diabetic, folks who have heart failure, um, folks who have maybe COPD or emphysema. These tend to be the very high risk groups that tend to need a lot of health services. Um, and if they're not treated well, end up in the emergency room. Um, and the connections, as we talked about, seemed innovative to me because they cover a wide range of services. So what that person needs, what somebody you know might find as an impediment to getting health yeah. care is not the same for somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you guys look at that. Absolutely. And, and that's the other uh, vulnerable piece to some of these populations is it's a lot of the social determinants. So patients that don't have transportation yep. and patients that don't have a great understanding about their health conditions. That tends to be a real barrier for us getting getting them in to help them. And then you can help with that sort of literacy about your own health and yeah. what's available to yeah, you. Yeah, and, and we can teach them to be their own advocates. Right. When the better they know about their health, they can advocate for That's themselves. It's tough to know, and people sometimes feel intimidated about mm -hmm. you know pushing in a doctor's appointment. Caleb, um, an important bit about loneliness and the epidemic around this with young people is the fact that this can lead to physical illness to be lonely. Can you talk to us a bit? about mm -hmm. that? I mean one of the leading neurochemicals with depression is cortisol and its effect on the human body you know the brain over time of just weakening the sheath of some of the neuro neurotransmitters is serious. Uh, Gabor Mate wrote a book called When the Body Says No of just some work he's done with folks. It could lead to MS, cancer, diabetes, Good you know grief. you know over time it's just Cortisone has a huge effect on the brain and the body. So loneliness so. is corrosive, not just emotionally, yeah. but from a physical yeah. standpoint. How do we recognize, I mean, teens are kind of famously reclusive mm -hmm. um, periodically. How do we recognize loneliness in our young people? Sure, a sense of just like, is there, you know, is there space for the person to talk about what's going on? I mean, that 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 behavior tends to come out in, in other ways. You know, parents are, probably more aware of that than I am, but... What do you mean? Oh, of just like kids tend to act out indirectly what they need and want if they're not able to ask for it directly. Right, so if yeah. they're looking for attention and connection, it may come through... Other things. ...acting out instead mm -hmm. of, yeah, how would yeah. you know to ask for that? And mm -hmm. you make an important distinction between time spent alone mm -hmm. and feeling lonely. Tell yeah. me more. I mean, there are people who can be alone in their apartment, but it could be completely content in life, you know? I mean, in a way, we're all lonely. I mean, I'm the one, I'm the only one who knows myself the best, you know? So in a way, it's like we're a part of and apart from other people. So at the end of the day, it's like, can I, can I be with myself? And 
you know, others are just accompanying partners of just like give us some reassurance. You know? How should we interpret that? If, if we, for example, feel perfectly okay being alone or even some of us really enjoy it from time to time, but if you're having trouble with that, if you feel like your thoughts race or you're not, you're not able to be alone with yourself, <coughs> what should you know about that and what should you do about that? I would say go talk to someone. Yeah, find some space for you to share what's going on inside. I mean, we all have a story that affects us, controls our behavior in a, in, in a way, but we have a choice what we can do with that. So the best thing we can do is just go talk to someone, therapist, parent, good friend, yeah. Is there a space um, in your profession that kind of specializes in young people? I feel like what they're facing is so different from what I face at my age. Is, is there a specialty around that? For young adults, um, or does it just happen out of interest? Like it yours? happens out of interest. Yeah, I mean, younger people are are more likely to reach out to younger therapists. So that makes sense. Yeah, but we can't be young forever. That's true. Yeah, it is. But there's hopefully a steady replenishment. Um, you've talked about the idea of doing new things, serving other people, mm -hmm. um, as perhaps a bit of an antidote to loneliness. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I think I think some people's some people's worlds can be this big, you know, you know, some people's color palettes of life, you know, if life was a painting, some, for some people it's black and white, you know, the, the more experiences we've had, the more exposure we have to life, other people, ways of viewing the world, adds, adds color, you know, Starry Night's a way more pretty picture than something just painted with the color red. You know. What is it about serving other people, volunteering, and everybody can find something they're interested in. There's a, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a terrible need for, for volunteers all over the place. What is it about the act of doing that that seems to help us? I think it's partaking in the act of the human experience, you know, knowing that, hey, I'm not alone, but this person who's maybe homeless or, you know, maybe who's in the other direction, e extremely wealthy, has the same experience as me. And we need, yeah. we need that connection so mm -hmm. much. Um, that applies to every, everybody's uh, circumstance, yeah. I think. Do we all feel connected now and feeling healthy and good mm -hmm. about this? Because that's what we want out of very Wellness connected. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, it's a, it's a sad thing to think about with young people, but if we don't know it, we can't do anything about it. So I really appreciate it. Thank you all very much. When we come back, we are going to delve into the viral sensation that literally has people scratching their heads more after this. <laughs>